Do you ever struggle to hear yourself? Oh. <sighs> ah, that's better. Do you ever struggle to hear yourself think with all these slime noises? Maybe you've seen one of my videos and thought, Say, that looks cool, I'm going to start my own super flat world. Only to boot up Minecraft and get immediately assaulted by these gelatinous jerks. Well, over my decade of playing super flat, I've figured out a few methods for dealing with these guys. Today, we're gonna get to the bottom of which is the best method. Now, before we get too far into the video, let's just say you're trying to make a creative world and you can't stand all the slimes, that's easy. Grab a repeating command block and type in this command. Set that command block to repeat and always active. You're gonna wanna turn off mob drops so slime balls don't drop everywhere. And you can also turn off those pesky chat messages. Then you're good to go. But for us survival players, these guys will spawn anywhere there's a slime chunk. And unlike most other mobs, they don't mind a little light. Unless they're swamp slimes. Those guys don't like the light. Now, on normal worlds, you don't run into them too often because they only spawn below Y level 40, which is usually underground. But on super flat worlds, everything starts below Y level 40. And with no dark caves for regular hostile mobs to spawn in, slimes quickly fill up the slots, ruling the land during the day. Thus, slimes have always been the main antagonist of super flat. In fact, it was so bad that Mojang specifically lowered the slime spawn rates on super flat worlds a little bit after they were first introduced. In the newest update, more structures began appearing in super flat worlds, and we discovered that the same issue actually exists for pillager outposts. Without any other mobs around to fill up the mob cap, the pillagers just spawn like crazy. And so, how do you deal with all these slimes? Well, if you're a hardened adventurer who can handle themselves, but are slowly going crazy due to the incessant squishing outside your window, then I've got a data pack for you. Boas from my Discord server put this data pack together. It disables the most annoying slime sounds so that you can play super flat in relative peace. But if muting the slimes isn't enough to evict them for not paying rent space in your head, then here are a few early game methods to stop them. The trench method. So if you've ever gone back to the beginning of my Flat World series, you may notice that the first episode posted way back in 2012 is titled Trench Warfare. And the way it works is basically by filling up the hostile mob cap. You dig a hole, the slimes chase after you, you lead them into the hole, and eventually, they'll fill up the mob cap and the game will stop spawning mobs altogether. So to test it out, I started a fresh super flat world. I got pretty lucky with an iron sword 30 seconds in. So I went and killed an iron golem to make some shovels. After that, I started digging about a minute and a half in. And then two minutes later, I had a decent sized trench. That's when I remembered why some techniques are best left in 2012. Mobs can despawn when you walk away from the trench, it takes forever to get enough mobs in the hole, and it's really annoying. And if you fall in there, say goodbye to all your stuff. It's awful in there. So let's just move on to method two, the water method. Now this method is a lot more quick and painless. All you're gonna need to do is find yourself a village, track down an iron golem to kill, and then craft a bucket with his remains. By walking diagonally and placing water sources, you'll be able to quickly create a huge spawn-proof area. This even applies to the other spooky hostile mobs at night. This is an incredibly fast way to secure a safe zone in your super flat world. The issue is that water is very hard to get rid of once you place it. With no access to sponges, you'll need to place a block to cover up each water source individually in order to get rid of it. And you'll need to be careful not to accidentally spread the water back again. If you like the way the water looks, that's no problem. But be warned if you ever want to change it. It takes a while. Which brings us to method three, the path block method. Last but not least is the path block method. It's definitely not as fast as the water method, but it's a good way to individually disable your slime chunks. Go ahead and type slash seed into your chat and click the text in order to copy it to your clipboard. Then Google slime chunk finder and paste your seed into the website. By using F3, you can line up your coordinates in game with the ones on the website, and then press F3 and G to get chunk borders to appear. Then you just have to convert the dirt in the chunk into path blocks in order to deactivate mob spawn. Other non-solid blocks like slabs and glass will also prevent them from spawning, 
but path blocks tend to be the cheapest early game. I love this method personally, because it's really easy to blend into a city if you want to make one. Take this chunk from my flat world, for instance. From a distance, it appears to be an unassuming part of a bustling city. But turn on the chunk borders, and you can see that most of it is actually path blocked in order to prevent those slimes. Then I decorate with things like trapdoors, buttons, and half slabs that don't give slimes any opportunity to spawn. Eventually, I plan to do the same thing with all the slime chunks in my city, making sure that I blend them into the cityscape as much as possible. After about 10 minutes and two iron shovels worth of path blocking, I was able to get about four chunks de-slimed. Obviously, this isn't the fastest method in the world, so if you're just looking for speed, it might actually be better to go for a sort of hybrid and just place some water down within each slime chunk so that it's easy to clean up later. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of methods here, but let's just review real quick. We learned that the trench method is pretty much useless and really doesn't deserve to be tried in 2022. If you do need to do a bunch of digging for your base, I would recommend instead just building up a too high wall with dirt. Slimes can't jump over that, so that should keep you safe. In my opinion, this is a much better alternative to the old trench method because it's just a better use of your time. Then we talked about the water method. And for my world, the water method has been really great. You see, I don't mind having my world sort of take place on a giant island, so it just sort of works out for what I'm trying to do with my base. But in places where you can't use the water method, you know, maybe you don't want your base to be an island at all, I definitely think the path block method is the best way to go. Again, I think this chunk in my flat world is the best example of this. You can barely tell at first glance that this was just all path blocks at first. You can really do a good job of blending it in just by being creative with your decorations. And if you do have one or two spawnable blocks here and there, it's usually not a big deal. The chance for a slime to spawn in small spaces like that is extremely low. I also just love that this forces you to be really creative in past videos, we've sort of talked about how hiding my ugly farms behind beautiful buildings is like a cool limitation and a cool inspiration for me to be creative in this game. And this is sort of a similar thing to where when you're forced to path block an entire chunk like this, you really have to think about why this part of the world is so traveled and beaten down. It really lends itself to like a sort of market square vibe. And having to make sure all your decorations are blocks that mobs can't spawn on is actually a really fun challenge. Like on top of this wagon where we're using stair blocks, half slabs, leaf blocks, campfires, trap doors, all things slimes can't spawn on, but it looks really great. I just logged onto the public super flat server and there's other cool examples of how people have disabled slime chunks throughout Swampton. We've got a lot of just half slab chunks, but it looks like someone was doing some glass art here, maybe sneaky carrot. It looks like this chunk is being turned into a map of the world. And you can definitely see other chunks that have been blended into paths as well. I have to say, it looks pretty weird when they conform to the terraforming. And these tricks also apply to like, if you have a cave base in a normal Minecraft world, and you're just having trouble with slime spawning everywhere. You can use half slabs, stair blocks, carpets, pressure plates, walls, all sorts of things prevent mob spawns. And remember, if all else fails and you're really lazy, just build above Y level 40. You'll never see slimes above that level, so you're all good. But guys, I think that's just about it for this video. Hopefully it helped you. If you have any more questions about slimes or how to deal with them, just leave me a comment and I'll be sure to reply. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like on the way out. It really helps with the algorithm. Gotta appease those algorithm gods. They want blood. Blood. Yeah.